Hello, this is Raymane here again with today's Bible reading. Today we're going to be reading in 2 Chronicles chapter 12. Let's begin. And it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. And it came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem, because they had transgressed against the Lord with twelve hundred chariots and three score thousand horsemen. And the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, the Lubims, the Sukkims, and the Ethiopians. And he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah, and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shimei the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Ye have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shimei, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them. But I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them, and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah things went well. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem, and reigned. For Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama, an Ammonitus. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shimei the prophet, and of Edo the seer concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, and Abijah his son reigned in his stead. Well, that's the reading for today. You know, there's the lesson here, I suppose, would be this. One of my most often sermons, if I can say it that way, is that you're an example to uh, uh, everybody that's watching you and you have no idea who else watching you there's people watching you that you haven't you don't have a clue in this case Rehoboam he was the king of Israel so everybody was watching him and whenever he forsook the laws of God whenever he turned away well he caused all of Israel to turn away as well because they said and it doesn't say that just flat out here but read between the lines here because they saw, that, well, you know, if, if the king don't, you know, the man in charge, if he don't think we ought to, well, you know, why should I? If he's not going to, well, why should I? There are all kinds of people that are watching you, the way you live your life, the words that you say, the way you treat people, the spirit that you manifest to other people. They are watching you every day, whether you realize it or not. And those same people can be influenced by the life that you lead. Here's the thing. If you live your life in such a way that your influence causes someone to fall by the way, so to speak, did you know, and I hope you understand, that you will call, be called to judgment, you will be asked to answer for that in the judgment. Something to consider. We all, you know, we, we think about uh, 
our close family, our, our spouses, our children, our grandchildren, you know, and, and for the most part, maybe we'll try to act right with them. But what about the people we work with? What about the people at the store that, that uh, you know, suspect that you're, you're trying to be a Christian? I'll set that away. But the, the attitude and, and, the, and the way that you treat people in front of those people, what about them? See, we don't think too much about them. But it all figures in to the formula that God's using to check your life. Paul told Timothy, consider what I say. The Lord give you understanding. God bless you, friends. Have a blessed day.